Hello and welcome to Simplified Medical Biochemistry. This video is a basic explanation of the folate trap. Folic acid or vitamin B9 is a water-soluble vitamin and since it's involved in the production of red blood cells, that is hematopoiesis, it is one of the hematopoietic vitamins. The recommended dietary allowance is only 400 micrograms, which is quite low. And we get this vitamin from various plants and animal sources easily or by taking folic acid supplements. So a common question may come to your mind that why do then people still develop folic acid deficiency although the dose is so low and it's so easily available from various sources. Well this is because we are taking an inactive form of the folic acid. To become active it must be reduced twice within the body. Then it finally transforms into tetrahydrofolate, which is its active form. Folate converts into tetrahydrofolate through a two-step process. First, the inactive folate reduces to dihydrofolate with the help of the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase with the addition of hydrogen. Then the dihydrofolate is further converted into tetrahydrofolate through the addition of hydrogen by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase again. This is now the active form of folic acid which is called tetrahydrofolate. Now I'll explain the basic mechanism of the folate trap. You can notice two substrates, the N-methyl tetrahydrofolate and the homocysteine. The N-methyl tetrahydrofolate is an inactive form of folic acid. When these two substrates participate in a reaction, the products will be tetrahydrofolate which is the active form and methionine. This reaction requires two enzymes, methionine synthase and the coenzyme vitamin B12. A shortage of these enzymes will prevent this conversion to tetrahydrofolate and methionine. As a result, the amount of the inactive form of the folic acid will increase in the blood and the active form will decrease. This is the basic mechanism of the folate trap. So, to summarize, the folate cycle becomes interrupted due to the lack of enzymes, mainly due to vitamin B12 deficiency. As a result, the folate stays trapped as N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is again the inactive form. And finally, there occurs a functional folate deficiency in the body, although there are sufficient inactive forms which is why treating such a patient with more folic acid will not result in any improvement since the conversion is not occurring successfully. Now let's talk about the importance of the active tetrahydrofolate. It plays a key role in the production of purines. It is involved in two steps of purine biosynthesis that adds a formyl group to close the ring. It also helps in the production of pyrimidine by carrying one carbon groups. For DNA synthesis and replication, both purine and pyrimidines are needed. Without active tetrahydrofolate, purine and pyrimidines cannot be produced. As a result, cell division will not take place and premature blast cells will remain in circulation. This will result in impaired red blood cell production, ultimately causing megaloblastic anemia. This was a simplistic overview of the folate trap cycle. Please refer to additional resources for more details. Thank you for listening and if you found this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe and share.